Okay, so today we are going to talk about writing equations. Um, they're actually going to be quadratic equations. So I want to start by reminding you about what we did when we were writing equations of lines, because we've done this before. So if you were asked to write the equation of a line with a slope of a half that passes through the point 4, 5. So what most of you did it this way, y equals mx plus b, and the half would be m. So this would be the x value, this would be the y value, because we have to figure out what the y-intercept is, or the b. So we would have 5, plugging that in for the y, equals 1 half x, oops, not x, 1 half, and we would plug in a 4, plus b. So we would plug in the x and y value that we knew and solve for b. So we would get that b equals 3, and then we would know the equation of the line was y equals 1 half x plus 3. So we're going to do something similar. So think about the strategies we used when we wrote equations of lines, because we're going to do something similar to that for um, quadratic equations. But first, we're going to start with some situations um, where you have a modeling prob problem, and you have to come up with an equation for a parabola. So I'm going to read what it says here. Parabolas are good models for all sorts of things in the world. Indeed, many animals and insects jump in parabolic paths. This diagram shows a jackrabbit jumping over a three-foot high fence. In order to just clear the fence, the rabbit must start its jump at a point four feet from the fence. So and we're, we don't have, we're going to decide, I guess, as a whole class, where to put the x and y axes on this diagram. Now, there's two um, places where you could put your x and y axes. Um, of course, it makes the most sense to put the x axes right here along the ground level. And you could put the y axes right where the fence post is, or you could put it where the, the rabbit jumps. And I prefer to put it where the rabbit starts jumping. So then we're asked to, so that means that this point right here would be zero, zero. And then think about what this point right here would be, because if it's four feet to the fence post and then four feet back to the ground, so this point would be eight, zero. And then we could even say what this point right here would be, because it would be four feet from the start and then up three feet, so that would be the point four, three. So if you use those points, um, we're actually asked in part B, and I guess I'm not really following necessarily all these parts, but find the equation of a parabola that models the jackrabbit's jump. So notice that this is the vertex. And if by knowing the vertex, so, so we have y equals a x minus h quantity squared plus k. So I'm going to use the vertex um, form of the equation. So we can actually plug this in for h and k, and then we can either plug in a 0, 0 for x and y or an 8, 0. So I'm going to plug in the 0, 0 for x and y. So when I do that, I'm going to get a 0 here. I don't know a. I'm going to plug in a 0 for x because I know that's a point on the parabola. Here's the parabola, by the way and h is 4 quantity squared plus 3. So it's very similar to what we did for a line except that we're using a quadratic equation. So then you solve this. So we get 0 equals 0 minus 4 is negative 4 squared. That you get a positive 16. So 16 times a plus 3. Subtract the 3 and divide by 16. So we get negative 3 sixteenths. And we get that that's the value of a. And that's what I needed to know. I needed to know what this value is, the stretch or compression for that. So now I get y equals negative 3 sixteenths. And I'm going to fill in my hk, my vertex. We have x minus 4 quantity squared plus 3. And this quadratic equation right here would model the path that the rabbit would jump. Okay, um, some of the other questions in here, what do the dependent and independent variables represent in the situation? Um, the independent variable would be this value here, so that's the that horizontal distance 
um, that the rabbit would travel. And then the dependent variable would be the y value, so that's the height of the, um, of the rabbit. So I'm not so worried about that. I just wanted to use this as an example to how you would write an equation, a quadratic equation. So let's take a look at this next example. A fireboat in the harbor is assisting in putting out a fire in a warehouse along the pier. Use the same process as in the previous problem to find the equation of the parabola that models the path of the water from the fireboat to the fire. If the distance from the barrel of the water cannon to the roof of the warehouse is 120 feet, and the water shoots up 50 feet above the barrel of the water cannon. So we have this picture, we can see the water kind of coming across here. Again, we have to place the X and Y axes. So I'm going to place the X axes here and the Y axes here. So then this is zero, zero, where the water is leaving the fireboat. And now I can actually figure out what the vertex would be. So it's halfway across, so that's 60 and up 50. So now I have my vertex, and I, I, I know this is 120, 0, but I'm probably going to use the 0, 0 for my equation. Um, now, notice that if I put the y-axis in the center, I would actually have a different equation. So it's important that you, you know, have a picture so you can see where, you've, um, where, where your x and y-axis are. So now I'm ready to, to fill in y equals a x minus h quantity squared plus k, and we're going to figure out the value of h. So I know that h is 60 and k is 50, and this is the value I'm going to use for x and y. So I get 0 equals a, 0 minus 60 quantity squared plus 50. So when you solve this, Neg um, we get a negative 60, and if you square that, you're going to get 6 times 6 is 36, and you're going to have two zeros. It's going to be positive, so we get 3,600a plus 50. Subtract the 50, and then divide by 3,600. And, you know, you might get some weird numbers. That's okay. So we get, for a, we can reduce those. Um, we get negative 1 over, that's going to go 72 times. So I get, and I'm going to leave it as a fraction. It's just a little easier. So now I'm ready to write out my equation. Y equals negative 1 over 72. And notice we got a negative, and notice it opens down. That makes sense. Um, X minus 60 quantity squared plus 50. So this equation would model this situation. So now we're going to do a problem that doesn't have context, and you're going to be doing a worksheet that is more like this, um, that you'll have to practice writing the equation. So it says, use the information provided to write the um, vertex form equation of each parabola. Now, you'll notice that it says it opens up or down. Um, there are some parabolas that open sideways. We're not doing those yet, and so the directions where I got this from, the program, had this in there, opens up or down. So you don't have to really pay attention attention to that. I mean, if we get the value of a as negative, we'll know it opens down. So the vertex, remember, is hk, and it passes through the, a point. They give you a point, so I'm going to use this for x and this for y. So again, we have y equals a, x minus h quantity squared plus k. So I can fill those in. A negative 7 for y equals a. That's what we're trying to solve negative 7 minus a negative 6 quantity squared, then plus a negative 9. So I'm going to change this to positive. So negative 7 plus 6 is negative 1. Square that, you get a 1. 1 times a is a. And then if you add 9, we get a equals a positive 2. So then my equation, equation is y equals 2 x minus a negative 6 makes it plus 6, quantity squared, and then minus 9. So this would be my equation in vertex form. All right, now these directions say to do it in standard form. Remember, standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c, um, y equals... So, um, but we're going to do vertex form first, and then we're going to change it. I'll show you how to change it. 
So this is h, this is k, this is x, this is y. So we have this form first. So we've got 35 equals a, 3 minus 1 quantity squared plus 3. So I'm just filling in everything that I need to substitute. So then 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4, so I get 4a plus 3. Subtract the 3 and divide by 4, so we get a equals 8. So my equation, y equals 8, x minus 1 quantity squared plus 3. Now if we were just asked to put it in graphing form, we'd be done, but it says standard form, so I have to switch that. So the first thing you're going to do is you have to um, multiply x minus 1 quantity squared. You can FOIL it or you can put it in a box. So we're going to get x squared. The outside gives me minus x. The inside gives me minus x. And the last gives me plus 1. So I get x squared minus 2x plus 1. That's the part that is this binomial squared. But I have to have an 8 out front, so I'm going to have to distribute the 8. So a little bit more work involved for this one. So you're going to distribute the 8. And we get 8x squared minus 16x plus 8 plus 3. So now I can combine like terms. I get y equals 8x squared minus 16x plus 11. And that would be my quadratic equation in standard form. All right, so here's another one in vertex form. I like them when they're in vertex form. So this is h, this is k, this is x, this is y. So we have, um, I'm going to write down the formula first. Good idea to do that. Helps you remember it. So we're going to have negative 6 equals a negative 10 minus negative 9 makes that a plus 9 quantity squared minus 5. So negative 10 plus 9 is negative 1 square it you get a positive 1 and if you add 5 we get a equals negative 1. So now I know my equation is y equals negative you don't have to put the 1 you can just put a negative sign x plus 9 quantity squared minus 5. Okay? And um, actually, we're not doing this one, so I don't even think I put that on your notes. So anyway, that is how you write equations, um, quadratic equations. Now notice in every situation I knew the vertex. So, I mean, there is a way to do these um, if you only know um, points, but like pat the points that it passes through. But in all the problems you're going to do, you know the vertex and one of the points it passes through. So label the vertex HK, label the other point XY, plug it into the formula, solve for A.